and fit we are about in Aberdeenshire, Scotland, the day is part of what Doric Future is all about. Recently, we have joined forces with some students in Robert Gordon's University in Aberdeen to help gain them experience for their different degrees. I'd like to present two little productions by Sean and Jamie, who were really very interested in the Doric culture and what was going on in Aberdeen. So I'd like to present their productions to you. Hope you enjoy them. Thank you, Alec, for coming on to Dog TV. Yeah, totally welcome. Uh, got a few questions for you. If you, sure. if you, if you can ask, not ask, answer them, sorry. Uh, so being a dog born after, what would you say are some of the opportunities and challenges you might face? Um, well, right from the beginning, going to drama school, coming from Aberdeen, I grew up speaking broad Doric. My mum my, my was from Kemme, so it was, you know, country Doric. <laughs> uh, Paradise Road in Kemme, which she always said that was a joke. <laughs> she grew up during the, the Second World War. Um, going to drama school, they ironed my accent out. You can hear the way I speak now. This is how I normally, I'm not acting, this is my normal way of speaking. So it's kind of Aberdeen tinged but it's not broad Doric. And I can start speaking like that if I lived there, because yeah. that's who I grew up. But at drama school, they knocked that out of me completely. And the weirdest thing, it wasn't even the Aberdonian they wanted. They wanted to knock out all Scottishness out of me. Mm. So we did RP all the time. All the parts she had to play were all in English RP. Then when I left, immediately I got jobs like Taggart uh, and another two jobs at STV. They wanted a Glasgow accent for that. It was incredible. I got cast in London and I went down to London and they went, oh, you're not from Glasgow. And I went, uh, well, actually, no, I'm from, I'm from Aberdeen. Is, is that a problem? Oh, it's just like, well, can you do it in Glasgow? Of course. And I, literally the first 20 years of my career, I did that. In fact, the, th the biggest thing I'm known for, uh, Roughnecks, which was an oil, oil thing, even though it was shot in Aberdeen, the character I was playing was Glaswegian. He was a Rangers supporter. Yeah, boo. Because <laughs> I'm a big Don supporter. Well, talking about drama school, uh, did you, so you said you did go to drama school. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, it, it was, at that time it was called the Royal Scottish Academy of Music and Drama. It's now called the Royal Conservatoire of Scotland, RCS. Oh, Royal That's what it's called. Yeah. That's where I went. And I did the Diploma in Dramatic Art, which was the, um, the acting one rather than the BA one. Uh, it wasn't actually that much different, but it was more geared to uh, being a professional actor. Yeah, it's very prestigious. Yeah. Say, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, Robert Carlyle was a year below me, John Hanna and Alan Cummin were in my year. In fact, I've worked with them, we've all worked together years ago yeah. in my career. Went up for a bit, first 20 years, then came doing, and I'm just on the rise again now, which is, thank you. <laughs> uh, what are some of the more notable pieces of work in your, that you've done for the acting industry? So what, like, well, I mean, a lot of the TV stuff. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll go back to theatre to begin with. Um, National Theatre of Scotland, I, I've worked with twice. Um, National Theatre in London, I did a very famous or infamous uh, version of Midsummer Night's Dream with probably the best director in the world, who's also the most amazing director, uh, Robert Lepage from Canada, uh, Quebec was. I don't know if you've ever heard of him, but he's absolutely incredible. Those are the theatre highlights. Although I've worked with every, I've worked with them all. Dundee Rep is where I cut my teeth. In fact, to tell you the truth, some of the stuff I did at Dundee Rep are still some of my favourite work. Because it's kind of, I know it's not Aberdeen, but it's as close as you can get. Yeah. You know, I did entertain him Mr Sloan, played the boy in that, and the boy in Equus, which was a famous thing. The guy from Harry Potter did that not that, not long ago. The first thing he did in theatre after um, Harry Potter was, was a thing called Equus. It's a famous play. Uh, from the 60s. So those were two big highlights of mine. And I'd done a play called The Fairly Mac You Work, which was all about the jute industry. So I had to do a Dundee accent for that, near Aberdonian, but they, I got away with it. Yeah, eh, well, that's great. A pair. <laughs> uh, you recently just directed and starred in your new short film, Feel at the Wheel. The Feel at the Wheel, that's right. Was it a stressful process directing and acting? No, time? because I've been, I, I, I've done, I progressed from acting into doing theatre directing. And I worked with a, a little, this is where the Doric comes in, I worked with a little company up up, up here in Aberdeen, uh, which did kind of theatre tours, 
a hidden Aberdeen, it was called. It was a Dr. Fiona Jane Brown uh, ran it. She was a historian and she employed me to come along and I took scripts. She wrote scripts that were very prose-like and she would give them to me and I turned them into drama scripts. It's a different form. But that was Anne Aberdonian, Ken. It was Anne Doric. It was great. And it was the history of Aberdeen and it was some amazing stuff. And, and then we, I did a site-specific uh, piece. I opened, oh God, uh, the, the Anatomy Rooms. Mm. I was the first person to, to use that as a, a theatre space. Oh, wow. And we did a, a Halloween thing with all these horror stories that were all real. And I acted in it as well. And I, I just, I, I think all the acting work I've done, it's been an easy transition into directing. Yeah. And all the actors I've worked with have said they liked working with me because it didn't feel like they were being directed because I knew as an actor what how to do it. Is that, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, you no. don't, you don't, Act it. You don't say to them how to say the lines or anything. You just give them a few suggestions, and and it's been really enjoyable. Of course. Uh, well, also congratulations for submitting it to the. Well, it kind of won people. because it, it was part of the twelve that that they did a different thing with. Instead of it being an, an all out prize for three three things, they actually gave us five hundred quid each to make it, and it wow. was guaranteed that those twelve that that made it out of quite a lot of submissions we were so you can view it on the on the website so did you win? well yeah the, t the 12, 12 12 of us were winners oh. yeah yeah every year around 11,000 people migrate to Aberdeen City whether it be for work study or simply to see a new side of Scotland relocating anywhere comes with its challenges saying goodbye to loved ones wandering down unfamiliar streets and diving into a new cultural environment. You can be forgiven for letting some of it pass you by. Besides walking along the beach or enjoying a buttery, Aberdeen is also proud of its rich history with the Doric dialect. Doric was first used to describe the dialect which was used in the northeast of Scotland in 1792 and grew in popularity through small farming communities. In the present day, Doric is still important to many people living in the city, with many passionate advocates. One of these is Professor Peter Reid, who's a member of the Doric board. It's fit with spoke at home, um, and it is the way I would engage with my parents, with my family, with my neighbours, with my friends. Despite the presence of such a strong dialect, many people who move to Aberdeen are not aware of the fact that it's so widely spoken. There are fears that Doric is tough to discover for those who are not originally from the North East. This is due to many natives not speaking Doric so openly in public, or with people they know are not from the Doric area. I feel very strongly that it's not something that should be just pigeonholed into, oh, that's the thing you do behind closed doors with friends and family, or in the playground or at the supermarket checkout, that actually there shouldn't be an embarrassment factor in using the dialect. Um, it's an integral part of who we are in the northeast of Scotland. The work of great advocates for the dialect have inspired many Aberdonians to rekindle their love for their mother tongue. Initiatives from Aberdeen University and work on the Doric board have helped raise awareness and gather momentum for further representation on a national scale. On a positive note, it is believed that this momentum has been building greatly for the last 20 years. The 2011 census found that the area of the highest proportion of people using Scottish dialect is the northeast of Scotland, with Doric. One theory as to why the Doric dialect is not more widely celebrated is a lack of media representation. Initiatives such as BBC Alba have been successful for the Gaelic dialect, and there are calls for something similar for Doric and other dialects in Scotland. But it's not very visible on the airwaves, either on radio or television. That's something that we perhaps need to, well not perhaps, that's something we certainly need to keep lobbying for. There's clearly an appreciation for the dialect, for now it is about expanding it. This leads to a big question, especially for those moving to Aberdeen. How can I embrace Doric culture? From a young age, Doric is encouraged in classrooms with some primary schools having Doric weeks, which is specially designed to celebrate Doric culture. I spent an afternoon up at Cairnbog in Inverallachie, um, in the Broch, um, and they have a Doric week at the primary school there. Um, and it was just joyous to see the Burns performing in Doric. And what was particularly joyous was that there were um, Polish and Lithuanian and Thai Burns 
joining in in the Doric. For anyone from a different background, from Fife to Fiji, there are many ways to dive into Doric culture. Many great poems and stories are available online on the Doric portal, and there are Doric classes at the Elphinstone Institute. As for the future of Doric, it is a question of how far the dialect can grow. With recognition and representation growing, more media visibility is desirable. But with such passionate speakers, it is an aspect of living in Aberdeen that should not be ignored.